If you're going to take the risk of running advertising online, shouldn't you get the benefits of learning from someone who's in the platforms every second of the day? Welcome to BidPixel.com's Marketing Ear Biscuits, the original podcast dedicated to digital advertising run by two Aussie guys who ride around in kangaroo pouches and drink Fosters and 4X beer. Guys, welcome back. It's uh, been a little while. We've been busy. Uh, I think an episode is dropping today of my vlog, which is just discussing what's been going on in the agency. And this conversation here with this guy has been a work in progress for a little while. I think I got sick, you got sick, I got sick again, and now we're here. Um, so who are you? Um, my name is Jared, and I work at Evolve Skateboards. Cool. So... We've been talking a lot about iOS 14 updates for ad buying, Facebook. Uh, it's not just Facebook, to be honest, but like Apple's ATT and what's happening with ad buying and iOS 14. It's starting to happen, right? It's actually legitimately starting to happen in Australia now and the phones, people's phones are starting to get the notification. Um, we're going to touch on that a little bit at the end maybe. But I also want to focus on a lot of our viewers of the podcast are medium-sized e-commerce businesses who are dominating their market or they have a substantial market share in Australia, but they're now looking to go cross-border and they're looking to go overseas. And while we were solely going to talk about iOS 14, I think it's really valuable that you and I have a chat about Evolve and how Evolve Skateboards, which is the sort of synonymous e-board name in Australia, is now trying to take that title in the US and... Um, a big thing would be, can you just take a winning ad set and a winning campaign and a winning structure and change your targeting to the US and call it a day? I, I, w I, re <laughs> I really wish you could. It's one of those things where we are managing multiple accounts, for us uh, accounts meaning different audiences, uh, different demographics, um, different countries. So it's US, UK, New Zealand... Um, we're in Japan now as well, just about to launch in the UAE. So it's, it, it's, it's multiple. So to answer the question, no. It's every single ad set, every single campaign is individualized. Each creative is individualized to that target demographic. So it's a lot of work. So we usually talk with customers about, a, you know, if your target is a 35-year-old mum, a bar and bay mum is going to act differently to an ad or targeting to a Melbourne mum. Mm. I guess it's on steroids because you're talking different seasonalities, you're talking different language barriers, you're talking just different cultures, right? Correct. So let's unpack Absolutely. that a little bit more. You've got a ton of notes that you've brought with us. I do. So I do. let's start talking about that. Guys. 30 minutes, that's how long this episode is. I just wanna take a break here right now and tell you if you're looking for some content, there's chapters below. Skip through to what you're gonna find the most valuable or if you've got time, I really do recommend watching this whole video. Strap yourselves in and enjoy the conversation with Jared. He's an awesome guy and he's got some good insights for you that you might not expect. Now let's get back to it. Um, I guess uh, there, there was a few things I was gonna to touch on um, in terms of like what it actually takes to you know, be successful overseas. And huge caveat, I'm riding on the coattails of like 10 years of brand building of Evolve. I'm just, you know, I'm the media guy, I'm the, you know, the ads guy, and my team and I, we, we look like heroes because like 10 years of hardcore brand building from you know, grassroots that the founders have done, we've just seen a, a really accelerated growth over the last, I think it's, two to five years for us. So you're like the overnight success for them, right? Like there's been all this ground foundational work that's happened. Yeah, um, 100%. Pioneering, like even though it's an Australian market, I'm guessing some of the stuff they were doing a decade ago was pioneering in the industry, just, you know, different, it wasn't in the US market, right? 100%, yeah, absolutely. You know, Evolve is really, they've been around, there's, there's a lot of e-skate brands that have come and have gone um, and e-skate, e by the way, is kind of like a the cool term for electric skateboarding. So you don't have to own an electric skateboard to say e-skate, but if you want to be cool, you can say e-skate. So what sort of tattoo do you get once you get aboard? You, you, you say that sarcastically, but there are people in our community that have Evolve tattoos. No kidding. Look it up on the internet. It's there. People have the e-logo and Evolve tattooed on their chest, on their arm. 
the brand is strong. Uh, Brophy, this is where I say, can you just put this into the final edit and let's flash some man boob up and stuff of, of old tattoos. Uh, you've come in for the last couple of years of massive growth. Uh, you, from my knowledge, your ad buying skills has helped kind of also help move into the US market. So it's nothing to be unashamed of you being here for the end of it, but what's the last couple of years been for you? What's the stabilization of campaigns sort of, and you know, 12 months ago or 18 months ago now, we had CBO and mm. you know, now we've got iOS mm. 14. Like what's, what's some of that journey that you've been through? I, I came on board when um, Evolve was in a sort of interesting place where they, they had, um, I guess, uh, an agency, multiple agency involved. So they had an agency for EDMs, they had an agency for ads, they had an agency for Google. There was like, there was like four different agencies. Um, their, their premise was to sort of want to hire within. That's Evolve's sort of motto. They really want to build a you know, really strong team. So I came on board. Um, really just looking at a mess of like hundreds of ads, hundreds of campaigns. And really my job at the beginning was to, to consolidate everything. So you've still got some outsourcing happening, don't you? I think your Google ads is still outsourced. A little bit, yeah. Yep. Yeah, okay. slowly, slowly bringing everything in-house. So um, it, it's a mission for one person, but we've got a team now. We're growing the team. We've got an SEO person on board. We've got a dev. You know, We've got a creative guy. So the team's growing, but... When I first started, the the whole premise for me is just to consolidate everything. Um, we're actually running now um, three or four different countries under one um, ad account. So it's like super hyper, hyper consolidation. So one pixel across uh, three different websites on one account. I can see... I, my brain's already okay. ticking about... Yeah, yeah. V- domain verification yep. and everything going yeah, yeah. on there. So yep. that might be a whole other conversation, yep. but we might get to it. Yeah. And this is also on the on the back end of Facebook's advisory to to do this, and mm-hmm. we've actually seen an increase as well. So, where I was sort of clicking through into multiple accounts, you know, back and forth, it's now sort of under one account. We've, it's yeah, it's a, another caveat is our our account structure is nothing special. You know, wh- how we structure our our ads and our funnel is pretty basic. There's there's no fancy hacks. There's no trickery. There's no fancy audience overlaying we we like to keep it super simple but you don't like day parting and you don't like <laughs> like you don't have acronyms for your your strategy it, it honestly i've been in the industry long enough to know that a lot of that is is a little bit of you know um smokes and mirrors you can say rank factor like okay. i'm happy for you to say it definitely I, I think i think that the advertising world um aside from acronyms and fancy sayings i think there's so so much smokes and mirrors in the ad advertising world that it's really Yes, if you don't know what you're doing, you can waste a lot of money. But I think that if you can simplify everything, it makes everything so much easier. I mean, I can resonate with that. Some of our biggest clients have three campaigns running at any given time, and that's all they'll ever have. Uh, Then now there's more complexity underneath that. Absolutely. But three campaigns, top, middle, bottom of funnel, and they're making good money. And we can still test, we can still measure, we can still do everything we need to do without... Without spreading our budget too thin, without being too stupid. What, what's really worked for us, um, because, and the reason that we've been able to, I guess, spread our wings overseas is because the brand is so strong. You know, over the last decade, the brand has been built up, and Evolve has really invested into their community more than more than any other brand that I know. And by that, what I mean is, I mean, on a regular basis, Evolve will put on events. Mm-hmm at Evolve's own expense. You know, we'll hire at a, a go-kart track and people will skate around at night and there's a DJ there and we've got putting on a barbecue. This is all at Evolve's expense. This is all part of sort of that grassroots brand building. And, you know, that's kind of like your marketing 101 where me as a media buyer, as a, as a digital guy, I can, you know, I can leverage that as well. So... We, so, we've taken that model, I guess, and duplicated that as well into the into the US, and that's now where things are starting to eventuate. So the old saying would be that omni-channel approach. It's not just the the Facebook ads that's bringing the revenue. It's not just the influencers that are bringing revenue. There's a sum of a lot of things, and you just happen to be uh, what's the right word? You, you're you're part of that success from all levels, right? And there's yeah. that's. 
I mean, so many brands that are trying to grow and trying to build would maybe think, well, we've got customers now that are guilty of it where their only marketing outreach is Facebook advertising. And if something goes wrong, their revenue falters or the revenue drops. And uh, as an agency that specializes in just yeah. one thing, it's hard yeah. to coach someone because we're not experts on yeah. you know, brand building. We're not yeah. experts on everything else. We yeah. can offer advice, but we can't. We're not charging for it. We're not going to Absolutely. hold someone accountable for it. And we've, and we've seen that with iOS 14 as well, that whirlwind where people sort of freaking out, you know, um, attribution starts to change. Everything goes haywire. Um, yes, we're still getting performance, but man, we've, we've built a solid foundation um, through investing into the community. Even um, our Facebook groups, they're so, so strong. Like thousands of people that contribute. We contribute, we're active in there. This is all like, this is marketing 101, you know, like investing into your customers and pushing out stuff that's valuable to them. Yeah, cool. So what avenues and what channels are you doing that? Let's just rattle some some of the things that you're doing. So Facebook groups you've mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, days for your customers, so fan-based days, and that's happening internationally, is it? Internationally, that's everywhere. Yep. everywhere. Uh, social media management, like the organic posting is fairly strong. Yep. Um, you mentioned to me podcasting before. You're starting to bring valuable content out yep. there. Yep. Um, and then... Is it seen as, you know, this stuff is brand awareness, brand building, education and motivation, and then have you got a big focus on the retargeting, you know, come back and buy, come back and purchase? Absolutely. Yep. I'm, I'm a big advocate of, you know, it's fine to, I guess, put out a, a juicy offer out there in a Facebook ad and people buy it. But, you know, it's that old adage of, you know, you don't, you don't want to, you want people to come to you first. So for us, all of that, all of that brand building, that community outreach, all of that is, um, I guess, for lack of a better word, your top of funnel type, you know, organic stuff. And then f for me, my job would be just to leverage off that and really like use the, use the content that we've pushed out through podcasting, whether it's snippets of, um, you know, a podcast interview or um, even our weekly um, YouTube channel that we bring out. It's very informational, very, you know, tech heavy snippets of that you know what are people searching what are people asking what are the questions those are sort of the retargeting especially in google ads as well leveraging that as well um there's there's so there's so many nuances and little intricate things that go into play but yeah to answer your question definitely so is there a magic pill magic <laughs> bullet to take a an australian based ad campaign and duplicate it into let's say north america and get success overnight no I, I really wish I mean look I've done it yes and it has worked however looking at I mean evolve is a is a, an electric skateboard right you can you can really only ride it when this the sun's out or you know in the UK the sun is never out but when there's snow on the ground there's in snow on the ground yeah there's it's water everywhere exactly there's... right you know there, there's it's it's an electrical device so it's there it has its limitations so we have to cater to the seasonality. So obviously I can't take, to some exception, I can't really take the same, even the language, the copy in the cre and, and the creative has to be very different. And even the language between, you know, how an Australian talks or how an American talks, the slang is different, you know. Um, I've even gone as far as like what sort of emojis work better in the US than they do in Australia, you know. Like pe people respond so differently. Although... You know, when I am in a rush and, and I want to test something, I'll, I'll duplicate and see what happens. I'll, I'll definitely test. I'm all about testing. But um, for us, the audience, the way people respond to ads, um, how they consume it, it's completely different in the US. Uh, what about creative assets? So Australia's creative, our landscape, our cityscapes, our beach, like we're obviously coastal here on the Gold Coast. There's a massive lifestyle sort of you know, the lifestyle that suits your brand is suited to kind of where we are mm -hmm. technically. Mm -hmm. How do you handle your creatives? Are there different assets for North America? Are there different assets for Europe? Yeah. Uh, and are you very careful? Like we know that we can't use American assets over here because yes. America looks so different. Yep. And that obviously transcends the other way. Yep. Like is how important is that for you to generate creative? So important. I mean, we're, we're, we're fortunate enough to have um, a huge... Uh, demographic for us uh, in California, very s similar esque weather, you know, um, a lot of California, most of California, 
especially like LA, doesn't snow. So it's a similar sort of Queensland style weather. However, you go across to the other side, you've got New York um, and those places where things differ. Not only that is, and the Americans still use the imper- um, imperial system where, you know, miles per hour, you know, things like that. And for us, um, metrics are super important. I'm sorry, not metrics. Um, the metric it? system, right? The, the metric Probably. system. But what I was talking about is the actual, um, the power behind the board, how fast the board goes. That's all measured in kilometers an hour. And But the Americans use uh, the imperial system. So yep. we have, we're to convert that. So, you know, if you've got a title flashing over a creative, and you know, accidentally put uh, kilometers an hour instead of miles per hour. That's bit- you confuse the poor Yankees, right? Yeah, they don't you, know what you're talking they, about. They have no idea. Um, and I actually found out that only two percent of the world uses the imperial system. The rest use metric. So anyway, that's neither here nor there. But in terms of to answer your question, creative is is using different creative is massively important. Yes, we you'll use the same elements, you know, like um, colors and things like that. But it will definitely cater to to the audience. Yep. All right. What outperforms the other lifestyle creative? So someone on the product using the product and actually let's define this. We're talking specifically, let's go bottom of funnel ads. So pure retargeting, trying to get dollars into the checkout, lifestyle ads or product photos and deep etch style studio product photos. Mm, it depends. I mean, we're, we're running a sale at the moment. So, um, yeah, that's a that's a good question. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I really wish there was one one answer. But uh, lifestyle, w- what we found is that we've we've especially on on actual product pages. So clicking through from a, you know clicking through onto our website, we've we've tested out instead of having sort of your static flat product image, we've put a lifestyle image as the first image as opposed to the first or second, and tested that. For us, it hasn't made a huge difference. People really want to see the, the technicalities of the board. Why are they spending this amount of money on this particular toy, really? Mm-hmm. It's a toy at the end of the day. So for us, someone you know, shredding in the streets, going through, oh, you can go on the grass and the road, um, sort of showing those, those features as opposed to the benefits for us tends to work better. Um, I wish there was one specific answer, but there's not. I mean, I guess it varies, to be honest with you. Okay. Uh, what's your ideal campaign structure? Like right now in Australia, mm. there's not that many ads running. No. Uh, you've got your sale on right now. It's all across the website. What's How many campaigns would you have on average? How many ad sets would be in those campaigns? How many ads are you testing? Uh, I'd like so to... like ballpark. Like... Yeah. I mean, I'd like to say that we've got, you know, fancy hacks and trickeries and but it's so simple sometimes you know i feel like um, is it really worth me being there I hey, justify your yeah, job yeah, we yeah, can yeah, cut yeah, this yeah, out yeah. if you want but no like, what, what do you yeah, do all yeah day? i just uh, <laughs> i i think there's 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 an element of of simplicity there where because because i'm managing multiple countries i have to keep it simple um, otherwise you do tend to, and I've done this before, I've run the wrong ads in, in the wrong country and it's, it's, it's very easy to do. So for us, you know, say for, for Australia, there's maybe f- five campaigns running in those ad sets, maybe, you know, four, three to four ad sets. And then in terms of creative, anybody, anywhere between three to, to six at any one time, the key for us is that we are turning on over creative quite frequently, like testing out creative often, more so than we probably, you know, need to. But what, f- weekly, daily, probably every three days for us. Okay. Yeah, we we we're fortunate enough to have the ability to do that. We have a creative team, and the the turnover rate on creative is phenomenal. I'll you know tell the creative guy I want to test um, a particular ad looking like this. Somebody doing something very specific. And we can pull from um, old footage and cut it up, put some titles over it, test it. Are you also using a lot of your user-generated content, your community content we as are, well? We a yep. lot, yeah. I mean, our community is so passionate about um, the product and the board is that they'll just, you know, say, do whatever you want with it. So obviously, give, we ask them permission, always ask permission. Tagging them, asking permission, Absolutely, all that sort yeah. of stuff. Yeah, cool. Yeah. All right, so keeping it simple, Absolutely. Watching your metrics, yep. 
paying homage to the different seasonalities, different air regions. Yep. Like, it doesn't sound hard to me. Um, cool. Let's Everyone can do it, right? So, I thought Jared had come on this episode and give us a bunch of these secrets and these hacks and these magical backdoor strategies to scale Facebook advertising and Google advertising when you want to go abroad and when you want to go overseas. Mm-hmm. What were we actually going to call this episode? What's what's your title that you've got there? My, my title was Evolve Secrets to Building an Unstoppable Brand Overseas. All right, so... We just had a quick break and we were looking through Jared's notes to make sure we haven't missed anything. We are actually going to split this into a two-episode podcast because there's some of the more technical stuff about iOS 14 and how you've got your pages structured and ad accounts structured, which we are going to dive into. But let's come back to that title and what you've got on your phone there. What's the, uh, what are the secrets to building an unstoppable brand? Spoiler alert, there are no secrets. You're supposed to leave that till the end, man. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what are what are the what are the not so secret things about how Evolve spent ten years doing what they're doing? Well, the f- the first thing I had was um, create a valuable create valuable content that's uniquely your brand. Tick, tick. So that's um, what's uh, sorry to interrupt you. That's kind of like customer experience, user experience. Let's absolutely. get them engaged and keep them engaged. Hundred percent. Yeah, absolutely. Um, like I said before in the in the earlier episode, Evolve has spent so much time investing into YouTube, into podcasts, um, building out the community. But you know, it's taken me. I think it's taken me this long to figure out that your brand is the single most valuable asset to to your business. You know, I, I've I've have seen other brands come and go, especially Eastgate. You know the way that Evolve invests into the brand and creating content that's that's so uniquely them is is absolutely vital. Cool. Mm. Create valuable content. Yeah. Wow. What's the second thing on your list there? Second thing is solve problems. This is like um, this is marketing 101. But if you're if you're not sure what uh, to create, what content to create. Put some content out there that solves problems, right? What does your brand solve? And for us, Evolve, Evolve Evolve's never really been like a solutions-based business. You know, it's a it's a toy, it's a cool toy that you skate around. But COVID came around, and we had to look at it completely different. We, you know, like a lot of e-commerce brands, um, you know, e-commerce surged, and we we're trying to figure out why. Why were people buying more skateboards? Like, what was the deal? And for us, the, the problem that we started to solve was people were looking at an alternative means to commute. People were now using an electric skateboard to, to commute to the office, to home. People didn't feel safe, um, you know, dry, uh, catching public transport or Ubers and things like that. So that was a, that was a problem we solved. So we started creating content around, around that and saw, saw some really positive results. I guess the big thing about that as well is you're one player in the market and as they're researching which board to buy or which product to buy, your problem solving content is actually educating and motivating them and giving them an informed decision of why they'd buy from you. Absolutely. Um, you know, CBDs and, and cities, we sold a, we've sold a lot of skateboards all over the world. Um, people don't, were sick of paying for parking. So just zip around, skate into the office, catch the lift up and you know, your skateboard sits under your desks and charges and then off you go uh, yeah. back home. Awesome. Uh, point number three? Oh, point number three. Um, again, we touched on this before, is invest in your customers. You know, we Evolve has really invested a lot of time, money, resources into building a community. And again, grassroots marketing um, through events and things like that, there's, it's just so key to to building a brand. Um, there's it's It's really not like rocket science but I think for a lot of smaller brands there's that element of you're going to have to sacrifice some of your your cash flow to invest in your brand if you see a long-term investment so you you talk pretty blase about it that yeah it's just what you do right (laughs) but that last thing that you said is pretty key and a lot of the small brands aren't actually doing the fundamentals like the the secret is to maybe take a step back and look at what your holistic strategy is Mm. and make sure that you're including those three points Mm. And then 
justifying those three points with some ad spend or getting yep. it out to a market who hasn't heard of you or a percentage of Absolutely. a market that hasn't heard of you. So, like, But yep. don't just say, we're awesome, we're great, come and buy our product. Yep. Take someone on a journey and back up what you're actually Absolutely. saying. Absolutely. Evolve's got a really good story as well. You know, brand story is super, super key. You know, um, if you go onto YouTube, you can you can find out why, you know, why the owner started Evolve. It's actually a really cool story. Um, the last, this is sort of a, a bonus one. It actually says bonus, like bonus. Number, number like four I've bonus. I've actually got bonus in here. So I, I really hope this is like valuable stuff. Um, the last one is become an expert in what you're selling, like become an expert in your niche. What I've seen evolve and I've seen, and I touched on this before, is that e-skate brands have come and they've gone. Our biggest competitor in the US. Can you say their name? I, I can, Boosted Boards. Um, they've they've gone. They've absolutely disappeared off the face so of the like planet. Casey Neistad was yeah. an advocate for them. Yeah, like, absolutely. He still has, like I still watch his videos and there's Boosted Boards hanging yeah, in the background absolutely. of his studio they're, they're no longer um s s people have bought parts and sort of like hacking them together but you know we often get asked why you know what other products are you going to bring out and we say well more skateboards and it's because we're trying to build the best electric skateboard so we are doubling down you know trying to build the best electric skateboard out there and our competitors are sort of we think overcapitalized but we're sort of sort of niching and being an expert in our in our products so Awesome. Closing remarks on this episode? Um, no, I, I really appreciate having having you. It's been, been fun. Very good. All right. So Jared is head of paid acquisition, head of, what, what do you call yourself? Yeah, I, I, whatever title He's I can pick. He's a really yeah. cool guy that works for Evolve Skateboards here on the Gold Coast. Uh, Jared, thanks for spending some time with us and telling us the not so secret secrets about <laughs> going international with your brand. Mm -hmm. But honestly, at the end of the day, those things are not just going international. They're I don't think you, if you don't have those fundamentals down pat, you probably don't have a big enough market share in your own market Absolutely. first. 100%. So I thought we were going to get all techie and talk about ad account structures and all that sort of stuff. Uh, we are going to do another episode shortly, so it'll be this later this week or next week. But let's have a little chat about how you've actually got structure in your pages and your ad accounts. Mm -hmm. uh, guys, as always, like, comment, share. It helps me know if we're doing content that's valuable for you. Uh, these guys have their own podcasts, their own content out all the time. They've got a lot bigger following than us, let's be honest. So go follow them. What are you telling me, Brophy? Notification bell. Oh, we'll link it below. Right. See, Brophy's awesome. Um, Notification bell? Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, I've got a little thing that comes up and goes, okay. ding, they'll get that part it of it. That way? Yeah, that, that, that it's that usually way. there. Okay. Um, Leave comments below. We'll leave a description to some of Evolve's content below. Uh, we'll give you Jared's personal phone number so you can call him and ask him any questions. Um, his Instagram handle. Uh, he likes chocolate Labradors and long walks on the beach. Um, That's true. Mate, thank you for this episode. Let's wrap this one and come back and talk ad account structure. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks, buddy.